Okay, so we'll start with the double bottom construction. The, the structural assemblies. If we look back, what is started with the plates and profiles. Then we had the sub assemblies, assemblies unit. So decks, side shells, bottom shells. They were under the so-called assemblies, right? Gradually, the things are growing. From the plates, we had small sub assemblies, the brackets, floors. Then we came to decks, bottom shells, bilge plate, right? Putting these together, we are getting the units. So under the units, we'll talk about the double bottom construction, wing tanks, right? These items. So, as far as double bottom construction is concerned, as you can see that it comprises of, well, it comprises of the inner bottom plating, also referred to as tank top. We have already talked about it, but just taking a relook, this part is the bilge plate. Right. Obviously, this is bottom shell. And here, this of the entire double bottom, we have drawn only one half of it. Right. This is my ship central line. So, here part of the plating of the bottom shell that is referred to as keel plate. Right? Of the total bottom shell, the plate at the center line is referred to as keel plate. Why the different name? Because it has some additional function. The strength or the thickness of this plate is generally more than the adjacent bottom shell plating. Right, because this uh, one can say as if it is forming the so called backbone of the entire ship. The keel plate, keel plate will be extended like this, as well as the tank top plating is also extended. So, along with this vertical member here, which is referred to as center girder, right, center girder or also termed as center kilson. So, when a ship actually is uh, put on uh, what do you call on the keel blocks, when the ship is under construction, you cannot really put it on the floor, is not it? Then it will be difficult to work. So, it should have a proper base over which it can be put. So, if this is my floor line, that means the ground line, the ship sits on such blocks. These are blocks, right? Generally, you have three rows of blocks. to support the over which the it seats. They are referred to as keel blocks. So, here you can see the keel plate rests over the keel block. So, thereby and here you have the double bottom, you have the central girder. So, thereby the weight is supported because when the ship floats, then situation is different the entire hull is supported by a distributed force. Here it is supported at certain concentrated locations, right? Because kill blocks are not everywhere, at certain spacings it is there, right? So that needs, so the bottom most plating of the double bottom unit is referred to as kill block. Then you have the bottom shell, bilge plating and so on. So, the construction inside the double bottom unit is 
it looks something like this as we are drawing it these are the bottom longitudinals we are putting it right these are my bottom longitudinals these are inner bottom longitudinals or tank top longitudinals right these are bottom shell longitudinal or bottom longitudinal what tank top inner bottom plating or tank top plating i'm writing tank top well that is shorter than that what inner bottom anyway so and then you see these green lines what are these struts they are referred to as struts what are the function of these they are essentially stiffening the floor plate there is a floor plate here the plate is in this plane in the plane of the paper right so to uh, and in the floor plate what happens you have such openings right only some of the openings i am drawing not all of them but in all the longitudinals you will have such openings through which the longitudinal pass right also the floor plating has the so called lightening holes right in between the struts you have these such such openings cut we have talked about it why these openings right so it looks like this then what about the member here in between this black line this is central girder this is by this one continuous line it refers that means there is some vertical member continuously going so this is referred to as side girder side girder right this in the center line this is on the side so you have a side girder it is a port side girder on the other end will be starboard side girder there can be more than one side girders here we have shown one side girder that doesn't mean that there is only one depending on the breadth of the vessel the number of side girders will depend if the breadth is more you will have more than one side girder more than one side girder means more than one side girder in each side port side one means automatically starboard side one so there is two side girders we are saying that means total side girders could be the two or four or six whatever so these are the side girders obviously you will have in the floor such cuts which are referred to as the what you call the scallops right okay so this whole thing would look something like this a double bottom unit so this double bottom unit is manufactured from or fabricated from this plating this stiffened panel the stiffened panel is the tank top panel right tank top panel then you have the bottom shell panel this is why we have talked about right even you can have the bilge panel and then you have the separate side girders and the center girders this is the center girder this is 
the side garden so what what we mean to say is first that means as as we are moving from sub assemblies assemblies and then to units once this assemblies means the tank top panel the bilge panel like that they are separately fabricated that is what is referred to as prefabrication they are prefabricated then they are put in place right the bottom shell is put in a in the place place means where that is what is called skid skid means because here what we are doing uh, drawing or showing you is that the bottom shell is absolutely flat not necessarily it will be always flat isn't it if we look into the entire say, say the ship structure suppose we are fabricating this part right let us assume you also have a small bottom uh, double bottom unit here so in this section the double bottom unit may look like like this right so here you have your some part of the double bottom unit can be this way the part of the double bottom here would look like this right so what happens is as i said there we talked about kill blocks the ship when the blocks are erected that means once these blocks are erected these blocks are transferred over the kill blocks and align individual blocks put them together you have the whole ship right but when this units are fabricated those units are put over some uh, one can say the working bench here the working bench should be this is your say the ground level so working bench should be something like this that means some supports over which this plate is the structure is erected right so these supports they are i mean properly connected with each other so that they have their necessary strength right this is referred to as skid also termed as zig they are not only they serve the purpose of supporting the structure but the top surface of the skid or the zig if i put a if i if i sort of join lines and develop the surface over the skid it will actually conform to the ship surface so how the fabrication process goes here the this assemblies that means the curved panels here you have the curved panels the plates are bent in the plate plate bending machine they are checked for the bent shape whether they have been correctly bent and then you bring and put on the skid it should match perfectly on the skid surface then it's a double check not only it supports it on that but also you can see that well it's matching that means these skid pillars they are not arbitrarily erected they are erected at predetermined locations that means so that i have these coordinates wherever it is touching the surface these coordinates are known right so it will such that it will match perfectly not only so it serves the purpose of supporting the structure but also it checks whether the surface is correctly done or not so the curved cells are put 
and then well the curved cells are coming with the stiffeners then your further erection of well erection of the center girder if it is there the center girder is erected welded and then the this uh, inner bottom plating is put over it and also the necessary welding is done that means there is a proper sequence is followed so th these weldings all the weldings that means at the end you have the entire unit prefabricated yeah a part part of part of the bottom plating can be the part of that keel where the, the keel is narrowing down is even keel means it's nothing but i mean no other uh, special thing or only this part of the plating at the center is referred as keel plate and generally it is of little higher thickness compared to the additional plate uh, compared to the adjacent plate the reason of this being higher is there is a wear and i mean it sits over the keel block so that's why it's given little extra strength because concentrated load will come on this right that is how i mean it's not a must that you'll have to have a keel keel plate of higher thickness not necessary if you provide a higher thickness well a separate name is given for this strike of the plate keel plate so that is what is your uh, double bottom tanks uh, uh, sorry double bottom construction so the double bottom construction thereby comprises of what essentially the bottom shell inner bottom shell and the relevant stiffening members what are the relevant stiffening members stiffening members of the individual panels inner bottom longitudinal bottom longitudinals and this is a case in case of longitudinal framing system we are not going not uh, discussing the transverse framing system because for all practical purpose it is preferable to go for longitudinal framing system why because in longitudinal framing system we have better buckling strength maybe this we can once again look back to that the framing systems say a plate right if it is stiffened in this direction and a identical plate stiffened in this direction so the top one is longitudinally framed and the bottom one is transversely framed isn't it this has been done by longitudinal framing system as if and this is transverse framing system both of them are under compressive load in this direction obviously the one with longitudinal framing system will have a higher critical buckling stress isn't it for the very arrangement this will have a higher critical buckling stress that means we will be able to sustain higher amount of load or in other words for the same loading if this is p and this is also p for the same loading i can have a structure in this case of lesser scantling right of lesser scantling that means with longitudinal framing system i'll have strength to weight ratio right in longitudinal framing system will be higher compared to the strength to weight ratio of structures with transverse framing system isn't it for the same weight strength will be better i'll have a greater strength right so my structure will be more economical so that is how we we'll have to see while arranging or making a structural arrangement so that we can maximize the use of long channel framing system but in some places there can be cases where for some other functional requirement 
will have to deviate from long channel framing system and take recourse to transverse framing system. Anyway, so that is what, so that is how the double bottom since the double bottom space only usage is either it remains empty or you use it for carriage of some liquid, not cargo, but say fresh water or fuel oil or lubricating oil or ballasting purpose. So, if I am carrying liquid, then whether it is longitudinal framing system or transverse framing system does not matter, is not it? Only I said that where longitudinal is difficult, where it becomes difficult, where you have interference with the cargo, mainly that is the main, main cause of concern at times when I have to shift from this to transverse framing system. Otherwise, all longitudinal. That is why in oil tanker, the entire framing arrangement is longitudinal framing arrangement. Right. So, doll bottom also similarly will go for totally a framing system based on longitudinal uh, framing system. So, that is what uh, uh, are the, uh, I mean, whole uh, this uh, so called concept of the doll bottom construction. These are the 3D units fabricated from the Stephen panels. Now, we have other 3D units are wing tanks, right. The wing tanks. Before you go to wing tanks, we can have a little look in the double bottom one aspect just, just to show how the things they take shape. Say this double bottom has been fabricated, then what happens? The other stiffened panels are the side shell panels we have talked about, right. So, side shell panels once they are fabricated, they are erected here. That means you have the double bottom. So, the side shell panel is erected. Side shell panel erected means what? Physically placed in that position. And when you are placing it, well, you have to have all kinds of support to hold it there. And this panel is either transversely framed or longitudinally framed. Let us assume it is transversely framed. That means, you have transverse frames, side shell frames like this. Right? And the doll bottom was longitudinally framed. That means, this is my tank top plating this tank top plating has longitudinal stiffness below. So, they can be shown by this dotted line. This dotted line indicates that the, they are the longitudinals running below this. Right? So, once they are put, then you provide the so called, it's, it is connected with a bracket. Brackets coming like this. Among this, this is welded as well as because just the entire side shell panel, if you just weld along the line, it does not get enough strength. So, you provide those brackets, we have talked about brackets, they increase the load bearing area, they enable a better load path, right. So, you can see these brackets are welded over the tank top, right. These brackets are welded here to the side shell and to the tank top. And where we are welding, see the drawing, 
where we are welding the bracket where you have those longitudinals that means it's taking the support of the longitudinals from there then it's going on the tank top and where i am ending the bracket toe on the longitudinal we are ending the bracket toe on the longitudinal that means you have the this bottom shell plate inner bottom plating let us assume this is my longitudinal below right and I am providing the bracket it is coming and it is terminating on the top on the longitudinal the part of the bracket is showing so this is it this is called bracket toe this is a vulnerable point because imagine this bracket toe terminating here means suppose instead of that you have a connection like this you have the bottom long channel here and let us assume that I have the bracket coming and terminating like this right this is not a good design why because this bracket what is the function of bracket it, it is transmitting the load right so all these forces are acting so here at this point it is acting so the load is not effectively transferred so this may lead to a sort of a deflection of the bottom plate like this whereas in this case it is taken up by the bottom longitudinal that is much stronger load supporting member so always in constructions we have to keep in mind that whenever this connections are done you need to have proper support to the end points so the toe of bracket should land over some uh, stiffener below right so that is how the side shell is erected similarly on the other side also the side shell will be erected and then you have the right and then bring the deck panel and erect it over it right deck also will have the necessary in in the in the same fashion long journal stiffeners right the long journal stiffeners will be there and then the connection of the this is my part of my side shell this is the part of the deck deck plating right this is side shell we are talking about if we are talking about main deck plating then this part of the side shell has a different name that is referred to as shear strike to understand shear strike means here essentially this is my if you see the a section of a vessel the topmost part of the side shell plate we have named the plate right kill plate bottom shell plate bilge plate side shell plate this is also part of the side shell but the topmost part of the side shell has a special name see a strike why because it is a special care is given to that so just to identify that particular strike a name see a strike why what so special about this plate what do you think uh, what is so special about this the primary thing is that it is the strike which is which is uh, 
one can say furthest away from the neutral axis. So, because of the longitudinal bending, right, the maximum stress is as far as the side shell plates are concerned, the shear strike will undergo the maximum stresses, that is number one. Number two, the shear strike is connected to the deck plating, right, shear strike is connected to the deck plating, it is welded. Number three is that well, it is more prone to some well damage, possible damage. Why? You imagine a situation you are loading cargo, right? Some cargo is coming, it is hanging, so it may heat it. Some accidental heating could be there while loading the cargo, unloading cargo, right? Any failure or any flaw taking place in the main deck may get propagated and goes to the shear strike. If shear strike cannot withstand that, the shear strike will fail, the, the fracture or the crack propagates, the whole ship will break in two, all right. So that is how shear strike needs a special consideration. What are the special considerations? Well, the thickness is more, a higher grade steel is used, this particular welding. these are the weldings, right. This particular welding is thoroughly checked so that there is no flow there, that is how. Anyway, so this joint is also vulnerable, but the side shell, the shear strike is welded to the deck and, and why this joint is important? Because through this joint, the load of the deck is getting transmitted, right. So, it should have a proper load path. Now, what are the structural uh, configurations here? Our main deck is long generally stiffened. Suppose it is going like this. Let us assume the side shell is transversely stiffened. In case of a general cargo ship, general cargo carrier, we will see that the side shell it is preferable to have transverse stiffening. Transverse stiffening means the stiffener will go like this, right. Also, let us assume the side shell stiffener is a angle section, right. It is the, it is ref named as side shell frame. Right. So, there should be, if I just weld it, it is not enough, is not it, for all the load to get transmitted. It will be better if I have a connection between the stiffeners. So, that stiffener is given, that connection is given through a proper bracketing arrangement and the brackets are like this. And well, it is preferable to have it sniped here. So, these are welded, this we have already shown. So, that is how you get the proper load path, right. So, when the deck is erected, right, deck is erected, after erection means what? You put in place, align it and then go on joining this. This welding is done, all these brackets are welded, so you get the full block, right. So, that is how you end up in the full block. In this portion, we have not drawn the wing tank. This is a section of the gel cargo ship we have shown. So, wing tank now we are coming to that. Wing tank, as you can see the name, it is kind of a tank as if, right. This wing tank and that the tank is in the wing, that is how the name wing tank, right. In bulk carrier, we will see, we have already, when talking about the different types of vessel, we have seen there is a kind of vessel which is referred to as bulk carrier. It carries cargo in bulk.
this is not coming very well. But well, let us take a look at the sectional view of a ball carrier, wherein we have the that concept of wing tank. This is what is the wing tank. So, you can see the difference. Till such time we had been drawing midship sections, something like this, right. You had inside a double bottom, depending on where it was general cargo ship, you had a uh, deck, lower deck, right. So, now this is a different kind of uh, section wherein this is my hatch opening. Okay. So, this is by the part of the main deck. This section is drawn in line of hatch opening, in line of hatch opening, where the hatch opening is that there it has been drawn. So, you can see there is nothing there as it. Okay. In this part, the double bottom is only this part is the double bottom. This is my double bottom and its constructional features and details are identical to what we have talked about. In that case, the double bottom extended further to the bilge plate. It has stopped here. It has stopped in one of the side girders. That is the only difference. There we have seen the side girder. Well, there is a one more word about this girders. The center girder is generally a watertight girder, totally watertight plate. Means the center girder divides the entire double bottom in port and starboard independent tanks. That means this port side tank and that starboard side tank they are independent it is divided by the central girder that it runs watertight. Side girder may be watertight, may not be watertight depending on your requirement. Generally, they are not watertight means they will have like the floor you have these openings, in the side girder you will have openings. Side girder is a longitudinal member contributing towards longitudinal strength. Floor is a transverse member contributing towards transverse strength. Right. So, this side girder. So, you assume in this case as if the doll bottom has ended in the side girder and this side girder is also watertight such that this is a separate tank in that case. Similarly, here also I can see a some tank like space. So, this is referred to as bottom wing tank. and this is top wing tank. This is a typical feature of bulk carriers only. In bulk carriers, you have such wing tanks. Why these wing tanks are coming? Then well, in this context probably uh, possibly it will be uh, better to talk about the bulk areas a bit. What is the function of a bulk area? to carry cargo in bulk. What does that mean? That means, you put the loose cargo in the hold. How do I put the loose cargo in the hold? How the loading process? Through a hopper, through the hatch definitely, through the hatch, uh, but it will come through a hopper and naturally it will be preferable to have an automated uh, loading arrangement. That means, you can think of such an arrangement. say you have it say you have a conveyor sort of a thing or or even without any hopper just a you, you, you have a conveyor here whatever thing is coming and 
it is falling. Right? Suppose you are loading wheat. So, you have a arrangement here. This is a conveyor system. Here you are putting the wheat say from the trucks or trailers or whatever or from silo. If you have seen silo means basically shore containers of this wheat, sugar, bulk kind of things. So, from that you put it uh, load it on the conveyor and through the conveyor straight to the ship hold. And you know when such thing is dropped it always forms a heap, is not it? It will form a heap like this. So, if the hold, if I keep the ship hold in this fashion, and I go on loading with this in this in this way, what will happen ultimately? I will have a heap like this, is not it? So, this will be my cargo, right. In the process what is happening? Your, yeah tell me what is happening? some space this particular space is remain uh, uh, under I mean not utilized empty right that is number one number two you think the reverse process of it unloading it how do we unload this this cargo they are unloaded either by a hose pump it out right or by grabs you know there are some some grab some such arrangement not properly drawn some such arrangement this opens up right you dip it and close it lift it through the grabs so either pumping it out or through grabs in both the cases once the cargo is unloaded then what will happen a part of the cargo will remain here in this corner How much corner it will remain? If you lower the hose up to this, so this will remain. So, again the problem unloading full unloading you will not be able to do and that will be quite substantial amount. It is not only the substantial amount, it is going to contaminate the next consignment of cargo that can be something else. So, it is sugar, next consignment salt maybe right. So, loading and unloading both creates problem. In loading what is the problem if it remains empty because as it is I cannot load it further because by loading this much it has already hit the so called flimsol line that means the loaded draft it is designed for carriage of so much you have loaded it it has already in this this space remains empty. So, no problem if it remains empty because as it is I cannot shovel it manually and pack more material because it is already there. But what problem it can give if it remains like that? So, it is not only the question of the space is remaining underutilized, but it is some other it is remaining vacant, empty. So, what problem could be there? Stability, stability means not master really so stability in these terms, not what stability? Yeah, so there will be the directional stability problem, not the statical stability that much, but directional stability. That means, suppose it hits a little bit of rough weather, starts rolling, that means executing oscillating oscillatory movement. So this cargo may shift, right? In 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 one rolling motion, the cargo may shift to the port side. In the next phase when it is going in the starboard side, not necessarily the whole cargo will shift back, right, because it is not water. So, it may so happen there will be a disbalance in the weight distribution and the whole ship may remain healed condition in an inclined condition. So, if it remains in an inclined condition, then it will have problem of maintaining directional stability. 
what does that mean? That means suppose your ship is supposed to head straight means your rudder also will be of zero angle. Now what will happen since it is healing, so it will have a tendency to take a turn, deviate from the straight course. So, you will have to give a rudder angle to bring it back to the desired course. Giving a rudder angle means you are wasting power. So, there will be drop in your speed. To boost the speed, you have to put more power means your fuel consumption will increase, operating cost will increase and so on and so forth. So, that is how this is the problem. That means, this space has to be looked into as well as unloading time, this has to be looked into. The solution would be that cut off that space, provide a plate, cut off this place, space and also provide a plate. That means, now when I load cargo, the cargo comes like this. When I unload also the whole thing gets unloaded because this slope of course, I, in this drawing it is very shallow. It will have a definite slope, required slope such that the cargo will come down automatically to the central path from where it is pumped out or through grab it is taken out, right. So, what should be the angle of this, right. So, that angle is generally uh, defined from the uh, so called from the angle of repose. This is a particular term used angle of repose means when you pour say sand or wheat or sugar, it forms a particular heap with a certain angle. So, that is what is referred to as angle of repose. So, based on that the, the kind of cargo it is supposed to carry, you know the angle of repose of all those cargo. So, a, some average angle is selected and accordingly this is this configuration is given. So, in the process what happens that means, this is a fixed plate right, this is also a fixed plate. So, these plates are referred to as sloping bulkheads, sloping bulkhead, sloping bulkhead of topping tank, sloping bulkhead of bottoming tank right. So, I get a tanked space. So, these are my wing tanks, these are my wing tanks. What are the purpose of these tank, tank, these spaces? Same as that of your double bottom space. That means, these now you have the, otherwise what was happening is you, as it is we could not use this space. So, by making a tank it does not mean that I will carry extra cargo there. It may remain as well empty, absolutely empty or in necessity. I can put some uh, well fresh water, if necessary ballast water, whatever, but it is not exactly that way. That means, it has to be decided, pre-designed. That means, in the design stage itself, the spaces has to be earmarked, whether it is going to remain empty or whether it is going to carry fresh water or whether to carry ballast water, whatever. That means, I have additional space in addition to the double bottom. If I have bottom wing tank, I have top wing tank, they can be utilized. So, now if I just look into the top wing tank uh, or, or the wing tanks, the construction point of view, it is like this. Okay. This is the main deck. This is my sloping bulkhead. And then this can be the hatch side girder. Where is the hatch side girder? All right. So, deck is longitudinal stiffened. Once again, we are using longitudinal stiffening of the deck. Similarly, you see here this part of the side shell, I can as well go for longitudinal stiffening.
is not it because this space is going to be used for some liquid if at all. So, I maximize my longitudinal stiffening arrangement. This is also longitudinally stiffened. So, thereby this entire thing this particular wing tank it becomes a quite a strong structure that in the profile say this is my engine room and these are my holes cargo holes. So, the top wing tank will run all along the length of the holes. The borrowing tank is also running all along the length of the hold and here you have the double bottom like that right. So, so it provides this both the wing tanks it covers quite a substantial length of the ship. So, it provides additional strength also additional strength that means all these these wing tanks it is totally longitudinally stiffened right. You have this sloping bulkhead the hatch side gutter and the bottom plate of the top wing tank all together provides a sufficient longitudinal strength. What about the transfer strength then? Again the same question is coming that these are longitudinally stiffened means your longitudinal members are running like this. Say any longitudinal this particular green line represents one of the longitudinal which is one of this longitudinal it could be one of these it could be one of these right. The longitudinals will run like this is not it. So, again you need to provide necessary support such that the span does not become too much. So, because otherwise your supports are the bulkheads right. So, the question of transverses come that means transverses right. So, the spacing of transverse spacing is generally how much? It, it is generally 3 to 4 times the frame spacing. or in other words the span of the longitudinals remains 3 to 4 times its spacing frame spacing. Frame spacing is spacing of the longitudinals this is my frame spacing right. So, if transfer spacing is represented by capital S it is 3 to 4 times is the small s all right. So, here you will have the transverses how that means at intervals like this you will have the transverses wing tank transverses they will be referred to as wing tank transverses. How they look at uh, uh, look like? like this. This red line is the basically the transverse member. These are the cuts in the transverse plate in the similar lines as you have seen in the floor plate. right. These intersections of the longitudinals and the transverse plating are same as that of <coughs> bottom longitudinal and the floor plating the same logic is followed. Now, so this is a plate in this plane. So, wherever you have a plate floor in the bottom shell in the in the double bottom space a plate floor you will have a bottom wing tank transverse you will have a top wing tank transverse and also you will have a wave frame here a side shell frame of higher scantling. So, it forms like a ring 
when you see this, when you talk about this transverses, right, at intervals. So, in the same interval, you will have a wave frame in the side shell, a bottoming tank transverse, a plate floor, topping tank transverse, wave frame, bottoming tank transfer, plate floor. So, such will be the deployment of the transverses or the transverse stiffening members. So, these taken all together, it forms a as if a ring structure like the ribs. At intervals, you have the ribs. So, they are forming the ribs. Those ribs as if are supporting the long tail members. Right. So, this is what and then now for local strengthening, because this particular plate, these diamonds, dimensions can be substantial. So, they may get buckled in between because of other loads coming on that. So, what we have is a face plate welded to the this cut, this opening. Again, the opening is for lightening the thing and we have said that this place can be used as a tanked space. So, if I carry some liquid, the flow of liquid, so the openings are needed. So, this opening and if you cut an opening, you stiffen it with a flat plate, stiffen it with a flat plate. That means, if I look a cross section here, it is nothing but you have the transverse member plate and there a flat plate is welded. That means, a flange is welded all around, a flat bar is welded all around. Right. And from here, like in floor, you had struts. These are my struts. Right? Those green lines are the struts. That means they are stiffening it. Right? That means the this transverse member. this particular plate is top wing tank transverse. There is a plate in the transverse plane. It is providing support to the wing tank longitudinals. All these longitudinals taken together, I can refer to as wing tank longitudinals. They are providing support. These details are the same as those details we have shown in the floor longitudinals, right. So, that is how. Now, to provide strength to the transverse, we have these struts welded, we have the this flange welded here, right. So, that is what is the top wing tank. The similar configuration will be in the bottom wing tank, identical configuration, right. Only the shapes are different, okay. So, we stop here today. Thank mm -hmm. you.